Hello NASCAR fans, I'm Chris Terrell, I'm here for RotoPros.com to bring you my weekly daily fantasy NASCAR post-qualifying picks video. Before getting into the picks, if you're not a RotoPros member yet, make sure to go over to RotoPros.com, click that yellow sign up button in the top right hand corner, and this week using promo code NASCAR you can get 50% off of a weekly monthly subscription, which gives you access to all of our premium content. We cover NFL, NHL, NBA, NASCAR, PGA, MLB starting in two weeks. We cover soccer. Pretty much if there's a DFS sport out there played on DraftKings and FanDuel, we can cover it. It also gives you access to our members-only community chat. We've got a bu bunch of different channels set up here for all the different sports. For NASCAR, I've put in a couple of the top news people in the sport who follow along track to track. They're there every single week. They're in the pits. They're in the garages. They're talking to drivers. They're talking to engineers. They're talking to crew chiefs. Best way to get the most information all in one spot here in our Rotor Pros community chat. Sign up today, you're not going to be disappointed. With that, let's jump into this week's picks. This week, the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series stays in Charlotte after the All-Star Race last week for the longest race of the season, the Coca-Cola 600. So Charlotte Motor Speedway, mile and a half intermediate track. Um, the one thing that we will look at this week is that 2019 rules package. It is the full package this week again. Um, we've now got a little bit of sample size that we can go off of. So what I have done this week is uh, along with the track type history on the sheet, I've also added the 2019 races that were on the mile and a half tracks using the same package, which was the Las Vegas, the Texas, and the Kansas races. So I've got average finish, DK average, and FanDuel average on there as well. Um, you can see that also down here. There is a tab for that, so you can go ahead and look at that if you want to look at that a little bit further. See where each driver placed. We'll refer to this a little bit later. So I have added that. From a fantasy perspective, this race has been like a one dominator race, which is one driver leading 100 plus laps in five of the last six races here. Adding to that, there's only been one race in the last six where more than two drivers have led 50 plus laps. I could see more of the same this week. Despite that new rule, despite the new rules package, we've only seen two drivers in each of those races, Kansas, Texas, and Vegas, lead 50 plus laps. There's only been two drivers to lead 50 or more laps in those um, three races. Kevin Harvick did lead 100 in the last race, um, so keep that in mind there as well. So, And this is a very long race, but if we go look at the last six races here, we've seen Kyle Busch lead 377 laps in the Coke 600 last year. Truex started 17th, led 91 laps um, in the playoff race in 2017. The Coke 600 last year, Aust or 2017, Austin Dillon won it, but Kyle Busch finished second. Then you got Martin Trucks Jr. there. He led 233 laps. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, when he won, led 155 laps. Martin Trucks Jr. absolutely dominated the Coke 600 in 2016, leading 392 laps. And then Joey Logano led 227 laps in the 2015 playoffs. Uh, he started from the third position. So usually the winner is going to get a lot of dominator points. So we're definitely going to be looking for that one dominator, probably two or three with the stage breaks um, being such a long race. I think we're going to see um, somewhere in the five to seven drivers lead, you know, 10 or more laps, which we have seen, which has been a trend in those Kansas, Texas, and Las Vegas races there as well. So... We'll just jump in. First of all, we'll look at some track history over the last two years. There's only three races in that sample size just because last playoffs they went and they're using a road course now for the playoff race. So there is only this one co race at Charlotte every year, the Coke 600, the All-Star race as well, but we're not going to be looking at any All-Star race stuff. Kyle Larson did end up winning that, um, showed a fast car, but a little bit different rules package there. So we're not going to use that as reference. So I'm just going to go ahead and sort, and if you're new to the sheet, um, if you want to look at average finish, I'm going to go in that column and I'm just going to go up to data and sort A to Z, which is lowest to highest. So Martin Truex Jr., of course, he's got a 2.0 average finish over the last three races here. He's got a win. And him and Denny Hyman are the only two drivers that finished inside the top five in all three of those races. Kyle Busch is the only other driver with two top fives in those three races. So Joe Gibbs Racing is definitely at the top of my list this week. Um, if you want to look at average finish here, we'll just jump over to this tab here. I'm going to sort this by DraftKings pricing. We'll just jump over here to this tab here real quick. Eric Jones surprisingly leads the way. Um, there's only one driver, and it's Kurt Busch who has top 10s in all three of those races with the 2019 rules package on the intermediate tracks. But Eric Jones um, has the top average finish 6.7 when you're looking at all three races put together. 
So you can come over here and you can kind of look at that. Clint Boyer's up there. Kurt Busch has been strong. Kevin Harvick, Al Marola. So Joe Gibbs Racing has been dominant at the Coke 600 and specifically Charlotte. But Stuart Haas Racing this year with the 2019 package on the intermediate tracks has also been very strong. So keep that in mind. Um, we've got two different things to look at there, so we've got to find a balance. So we'll just jump back. We're going to look at some of my core plays here. I'll jump over and we'll look at practice and qualifying times. Right up uh, number one for me. He's not number one in my model. That is That goes to Denny Hamlin this week. Um, just slightly because he's been a little bit better, um, as you can see here, at the Kansas, Texas, and Vegas. But Kyle Busch is definitely my number one this week. He's qualified third. Um, he's been good here in the past. We'll go look at his... I'm going to be definitely concentrated on the Joe Gibbs race and starting with Kyle Busch. He won this race last year in dominating fashion. Sixth or better in three of his last four. Um, he's going to be a contender when it comes to uh, dominator points because he showed top five speed in both final practices. With he was first in uh, 10 lap averages there in that final practice as well. So he's definitely going to be number one. Martin Truex is going to be number two on my core plays list this week. He gives us a little bit of place differential starting 14th. He's been absolutely strong here. When you're looking at track history, he's number one on that list. Like Kyle, he's had a little bit of trouble this year when looking at the Kansas, Texas, and Vegas, but I think this is the week that uh, Toyota gets back in the running. Um, so definitely looking at Truex starting 14th. I think he's got a top five car. Our team that's always been able to figure it out as they go from day to night. This race starts right around 6 to 6.15 p.m. Eastern. So, yeah, they're going to be starting the day, then the lights come on um, as it gets into night. So there are a lot of changes. Whoever makes the best changes usually comes out on top of this race. Truex has definitely got a crew chief that can do that for him. And then going down a bit, Larson is down in my model just because, um, well, his struggles pretty much this season. But I think he's going to make... A nice GPP play. Started in 25th. They got better, as you can see, into final practice. They weren't top 25. Started out with a slow car on the weekend. 12th in final practice. 12th in 10 lap average. I think they can even improve on that as well. Um, so definitely not worried there. Number one in my model is Denny Hamlin. Um, he's got top fives in three straight races here at Charlotte and top tens in seven of his last eight races. Definitely stands out for me at 9,200. Um, if you're playing cash games, I like going Truex Hamlin in cash. Um, or even Kyle Busch, just to get those dominator points that I think he's going to be able to get. And then having Denny Hamlin start in 20th with a top five car, it's going to get you some place differential. I think that's a great way to start um, if you want to go with cash. Either way, Denny Hamlin's definitely number one in my cash model. This is kind of what I'm looking at this week uh, in my modeling is a little bit more for cash. Definitely Denny Hamlin's number one. And then Eric Jones is the other Joe Gibbs racing driver I'm looking at. Doesn't have... The greatest run here is uh, 2017 when he was with the number 77 Furniture Row. He finished top 10, but he's outside the top 15 in his last two races here. Not too concerned. He showed a lot of speed this week, just like his teammates. Top 5 speeds in final practice, even in the 10-lap averages. So at 8,796 on FanDuel, I think he's in play in all formats as well. Daniel Suarez and Austin Dillon, both starting... Um, sixth and fourth there, as you can see. So they're starting up front. Those guys aren't normally your top 5 running cars. I will definitely look at them a little bit more on Fandle where place differential isn't as important just in case they're finishing you know, in that 10th, 9th to 12th range. We're not going to lose those place differential as much for those place differential points um, as we would on DraftKings. So definitely like them there. But they did show really fast cars, Austin Dillon and teammate uh, Daniel Hemrick there. They've got a lot of speed. Um, Hemrick's definitely a lot cheaper here, but I'll definitely be looking at them. Um, as plays on FanDuel a little bit more than DraftKings this week. I really like Alex Bowman as a pivot off of those two drivers, which should be popular. As you can see, if they're high in my model, they're usually going to be high in everyone else's model. So definitely looking at Alex Bowman starting 13th um, this week. He stands out to me. Now, a driver I talked about, the only one that finished top 10 in all three races, I'm definitely going to be looking at him. I haven't got him highlighted. GPP this week. He just hasn't shown... The speed yet, but they should be able to figure it out. He started in 11th as Kurt Busch. Like I said, he finished top 10 in all three, Vegas, Texas, and Kansas, in those three races um, with this package. So definitely going to be looking at him. He's been very consistent. I think you could uh, consider him in there for cash games on FanDuel, a little bit more GPP when it comes to uh, DraftKings there for me this week. Paul Menard started in 17th, showed top 10 speed in final practice. Really good price in the sub 7K range on DraftKings, 7,500 on FanDuel. And then um, GPP plays up top here in blue are going to be Kevin Harvick, 
they're also a very strong team. Should be able to figure it out. He's been strong here. He's led laps here, um, won races here. So definitely looking at him. Brad Kozlowski, I think, is a pivot off of some of these guys. I talked about uh, Stuart Haas, so um, makes sense to look at uh, Boyer and Almirola as GPP plays there as well. They qualified um, inside the top 10. Um, definitely looking at them a little bit more on FanDuel as well if you want to build a stack there. Some cheap plays I'm looking at this week. Daryl Walls Jr. starting 29th. I think he's got some place differential upside. I think he's more of a 25th uh, place car. 20th to 25th, I think, is where we can probably see him finish this week. So that makes him a nice value play in the sub 6K range. Um, 4,500 on FanDuel. I talked about Daniel Hamrick. Um, David Reagan as well, starting 31st. He showed top 20 speed as well. So I think he's maybe like a 15th to 23rd type car. So starting 31st, he makes a ton of sense as well. He's one that I would probably throw into my cash game lineups to get two of those higher-end drivers, uh, Denny Hamlin, uh, with, with teammate Truex or up there with Kyle Busch as well. And then Matt Benedetto probably going to be, this hasn't nearly been his best track, uh, starting 27th. He did show top 25, top 20 speed when you're looking at the 10-lap averages, which I really like to see. So, um, so he's someone I would consider for GPP only. So that covers my core drivers um, when it comes to cash games, GPPs, value plays. If you have any questions, definitely hit me up in the DFSR chat room, in the Roto Pros chat room. Um, also, you can leave your comments below on this video uh, make sure to like and subscribe we've got lots more videos coming down the line good luck this week everyone let's go get some green screens